That man was Muhammad, the best of creation. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Most Merciful. Praise be to Allah alone. We praise Him and we seek His help. Whomsoever Allah guides is a truly guided one, and whomsoever Allah leaves astray, no one can show Him guidance. May the best peace and blessings be upon Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Dear viewers everywhere, Assalamu alaikum and welcome to a new edition of Correct Your Citation. Our phone numbers are as usual, area code 00202-3855-248 or 249. The email address is tajweed at huda.tv. Today, inshallah, we're going to live with three beautiful chapters of the Quran, 103, 104, and chapter number 105. These are Surat Al-Asr and Al-Humaza and Al-Feel. After welcoming our guests in the studio, Sheikh Ismail and the participants would like to request Sheikh Ismail to recite for us the three chapters, please. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Wal-asr. Inna al-insana la fi khusr. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَتَوَاصَوْا بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَاصَوْا بِالصَّبْرِ بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ويل لكل همزة لمزة الذي جمع مالا وعدده يحسب أن ماله أخلده كلا لينبذن في الحطمة وما أدراك ما الحطمة نار الله الموقدة التي تطلع على الأفئدة إنها عليهم مؤصدة في عمد ممددة بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألم تر كيف فعل ربك بأصحاب الفيل ألم يجعل كيدهم في تضليل وأرسل عليهم طيرا أبابيل ترميهم بحجارة من سجيل فجعلهم كعصف مأكول جزاك الله خيرا من الله بليس يوم سورة العصر is a great مكي سورة that الإمام الشافعي may Allah have mercy on him used to say, if Allah the Almighty did not reveal any other surah other than Surah Al-Asr, it would have been very sufficient. It is a great surah, as we will understand its meaning, it comprehends all the good and righteous deeds, and it is a complete and a perfect way of life for every true believer. In the beginning, in the very first verse, as it happens repeatedly in the previous surahs, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears by one of his creatures. This time he swears by the time. I swear by the time. And time, brothers and sisters, which consists of days and nights, is very important. Our life is all about time. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say in a sound hadith, نعمتان مغبون فيهما كثير من الناس الصحة 
wal faragh there are two gifts and ni'am that Allah bestowed upon many people who are very negligent of their values they only recognize them whenever they lose them or any of them health and leisure time as-sihha wal faragh in a very single second one can plant a dead palm tree in heaven in a split of a second one can reserve a spot in paradise in no time one can increase his good deeds by simply smiling as I'm doing to you right now and by replying by smiling even without saying anything that smile as the Prophet sallallahu said is a good deed that is greatly appreciated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears by the time he brings to our attention its significance and importance and that in one hadith the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said whenever any people have a meeting or a gathering that they do not remember Allah in it even if it is a business meeting or if we're studying physics or math or anatomy or whatever and those people are dismissed they get up and they are dismissed without remembering Allah in that meeting that on the day of judgment they will regret that they missed this opportunity so also the companions as it is narrated by Thabit uh, al-Bunani may Allah have mercy on him that he said that كان الرجلان من أصحاب النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا التقي لا يفترقان حتى يقرأ أحدهما على الآخر والعص إن الإنسان لفي خص إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر uh, This hadith is judged as fair by Imam al-Albani may Allah have mercy on him Whenever the companions of the Prophet sallallahu used to meet they had this tradition that they would not part apart from each other they would not separate and be dismissed before reminding one another with this great surah one of whom would recite it to the other surah al-asr it is a great surah I swear by the time Allah says and the subject of that oath verily man is in loss in various positions in the Quran Allah addresses humankind in general as uh, he talks about some of their evil traits and bad habits then he exempts certain people for instance when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ خُلِقَ هَلُوعًا إِذَا مَسَّهُ الشَّرُّ جَزُوعًا وَإِذَا مَسَّهُ الْخَيْرُ مَنُوعًا إِلَّا When he says in Surah Al-Ma'arij verily man is created very impatient very impatient whenever uh, 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 evil touches him he complains he criticizes the divine destiny وَإِذَا مَسَّهُ الْخَيْرُ مَنُوعًا and whenever Allah bestows upon him any uh, wealth or health he deprives others from that and says this is mine these are some of the evil human natures but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exempted the believers from that by saying إِلَّا الْمُصَلِّينَ then he started counting the traits of those who will be exempt from these evil uh, habits similarly here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said man is in loss all mankind are losers except illa إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ And as we always said, آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ are always inseparable from each other. Belief without actions equals nothing. Actions without belief equals nothing. You've got to believe and you've got to act upon what you believe in. You cannot say I'm a Muslim and you're negligent of the mandate of the prayers. You do not fast during Ramadan. You do not even fulfill uh, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it mandatory upon you that's why we say to ladies who may walk out without wearing their proper hijab rather wearing a full makeup tied revealing clothes and perfumes and if you speak to any of them they say well but my heart is full of iman that's a lie that's indeed a lie because a vessel or a container 
if you fill it up with anything, with any liquid, when it overflows, it overflows of the same nature of its contents. So if the heart is full of Iman, it should reflect on the entire body, on your appearance. That's why it's easy to recognize a Muslim from amongst many people who are not Muslims or not practicing Muslims by looking at his or her face. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ There is a partial loss and there is uh, the loss which is an entire loss that covers everything. Partial loss if somebody was not as fortunate in this life, was not wealthy or was tested with uh, uh, diseases or poverty or perhaps Allah did not bless him with a child. All of that is affordable. But what's not affordable, the greatest loss is the loss of the hereafter, which no one can afford because it is eternal. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He exempted certain people from that loss, He said, إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ First and second trait, belief. Then the second, good righteous deeds. The third, وَتَوَاصَوْ بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَاصَوْ بِالصَّبْرِ تَوَاصَوْ بِالْحَقِّ refers to the very important quality of this ummah because of which Allah made it superior. كُنْتُمْ خَيْرَ أُمَّةٍ أُخْرِجَتْ لِلنَّاسِ تَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَتَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ وَتُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ You are the best nation was produced to mankind. Why? Because of what you do. You enjoy what's right, you forbid what's evil. This is what وَتَوَاصَوْ بِالْحَقِّ They enjoy one another to the truth. And obviously, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded all the prophets, ending with Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, with delivering the message, He also commanded them to be patient. وَأْمُرْ أَهْلَكَ بِالصَّلَاةِ وَاسْطَبِرْ عَلَيْهَا Because da'wah requires a great deal of patience. If you're a da'ya, you will get hurt. You will be targeted. So you need to adorn yourself with وَتَوَاصَوْ بِالصَّبْرِ these four traits are very important for the success of every believer. Belief, acting upon that belief, fulfilling what Allah commanded, enjoining what's right and forbidding what's evil, and being patient. Iman consists of two parts. Half of Iman is patience. Half of Iman is patience. If a person is a believer without and uh, uh, patience or sub, this is similar to a body without the head. Okay, now uh, I'd like to go to the next surah, which is Surah Al Humaza. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the surah, in the first ayah, Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim, wail. This is a threat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Wow, to whom? To one who does the following. لِكُلِّ هُمَزَةِ اللُّمَزَةِ Woe to every humazati lumaza, to every slanderer and backbiter. What is the difference between alhams and alhams? Both are evil actions and traits. Some people are unfortunately have these bad habits, slandering people and backbiting them, and we spoke about that many, many times. Alhams happens by actions without talking such as winking at somebody or being sarcastic by laughing at somebody or making fun or mocking at somebody this is alhams by actions when lems is by talking bad about others in their absence or trying to put them down or undermine them so alhams by actions while alhams by sayings and both are prohibited that's why it has been narrated when once two of the wives of the Prophet ﷺ, who one of them was jealous of the other and this happens Aisha she was saying that Safiya is kind of short she is a beautiful woman but she said that why do you like her she is like that and she did not say a word she did not say she's short or she is not beautiful, rather she pointed by her hand. The Prophet ﷺ said, you've just said a word, even though she did not really say it. If this word is mixed with the water of the sea, it would pollute it. 
This is how severe is Al-Ghams, Wal-Hams, Wal-Lams. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us in Surah Al-Hujurat to avoid that completely. لا يسقى قوم من قوم عسى أن يكونوا خيرا منهم ولا نساء من نساء عسى أن يكون خيرا منهم. Then he said in another one, إن أكرمكم عند الله أتقاكم. No people should mock at others, no women should mock at others. It may be that those who are mocked at are better and superior before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than those who are mocking at them. And he also said that indeed the most noble one of you are those who have more righteousness and taqwa. Also you will find that one who has this bad habit of al-hams wal lams would not only have these two bad traits, but it's a package. It comes with a package such as being greedy, such as being halu'an, very impatient. إِذَا مَسَّهُ الْخَيْرُ مَنُوعًا Whenever he receives any wealth or good, he keeps it for himself. He does not recognize Allah's right in it, nor the poor rights in it. الَّذِي جَمَعَ مَالًا وَعَدَّدًا He keeps piling up wealth as if he's living forever. And he knows how much he has. He keeps counting. Why? يَحْسَبُ أَنَّ مَالَهُ أَخْلَدًا He thinks that his wealth will make him last forever. Don't you think this one is such a fool? Because the wealthiest one was Qarun, and he disappeared overnight. فَخَسَفْنَا بِهِ وَبِدَارِهِ الْأَرْضِ Allah caused the earth not just to swallow him, him and his possessions, him and his, him and his belonging. Everything that he has, has disappeared. So well, wealth does not maintain security, nor extend the life of no one. We see presidents, and the, the, the Tunisian president just the other day. What happened to him? Now he's being chased. He's wanted worldwide. While he had stolen from his people billions and billions of dollars. Where can he spend them? Everybody hates him. He lost the dunya and perhaps the hereafter. May Allah pardon us and forgive us all. So those who keep piling up and think by wealth, they can buy weapons, they can oppress their people, they can control others. This is all mirage. This is all fake. What will secure uh, security on the Day of Judgment and guarantee security and safety is الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَتَوَاصَوا بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَاصَوا بِالصَّبْرِ So after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described the case of one who's greedy, who's miser, who is hammaz and lammaz. Now, what will be the fate of such person? كَلَّا لَيُنْبَذَنَّ فِي الْحُطَمَةِ Al-Hutamah is one of the names of fire, the fire of hell. And it's taken from its action. It crushes its contents. It crushes those who will stay in it. Al-Hutamah from tahtim, from crushing. لَيُنْبَذَنَّ فِي الْحُطَمَةِ Verily, he will be thrown and cast into Al-Hutamah, into fire, which crosses people. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. كَلَّا لَيُنْبَذَنَّ فِي الْحُطَمَةِ وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا الْحُطَمَةِ And what will make you know what the Hutama is? Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains. As He explained before, and the Prophet sallallahu explained before, He said that all the fire that exists on earth, from the very first day on earth till the last day prior to the Day of Judgment is only one part of 70 parts of the fire of hell. All the fire which we kindle, including volcanoes, which melt rocks and stones and turn people and uh, cities into ashes. It's only one part out of 70 parts of the fire of hell. So Allah is saving for the disbelievers, for the wicked people, 69 part of the fire. It is indeed Al-Hutama. Narullah al muqada It is the fire that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kindled for the disbelievers. Allati tattali'u ala al Which leaps up over the hearts. After it melts the skin, the epiderm, and it goes right straight to the hearts. To burn the hearts as well. Innaha alayhim mu'sada. There is no escape. There is no parole. 
There is no way that you can have some connections or bribe somebody to run away. There is no shelters. It is not possible that you take your private jet and you travel from country to country hoping that somebody will give you an asylum. It will not take place. If you would like to fear, if you have to fear, then you should only fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You should not fear none on earth but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because his punishment is severe and no one can ever punish similar to the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, إِنَّهَا عَلَيْهِمْ مُؤْصَدَةً Verily, it shall be closed up on them. Once the dwellers of fire will enter it, it will be locked up and there is no outs. May Allah have mercy on us. في عمد ممددة In pillars stretched forth, they will be punished in fire with those pillars. How? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. I searched in many, many tafsir for the explanation of how the pillars will be utilized to punish the dwellers of fire. Will they be columns of fire? Will be uh, columns of steel? They will be tied up against them, crucified against them. And the best result was Allahu A'lam because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi did not specify. Bottom line is we need to work hard in order to save ourselves again is the punishment of Allah. فَمَنْ زُحْزِحَ عَنِ النَّارِ وَأُدْخِلَ الْجَنَّةَ فَقَدْ فَازْ وَمَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا مَتَاعُ الْغُرُورِ But oh Allah make us all among the successful ones. Brothers and sisters, a short break. We'll return soon. Inshallah, so stay tuned. Recite it every day and do read it loud. Allah is beautiful and He loves beauty. So is it logical to say all plastic surgeries are lawful in Islam to bring or to regain beauty? It is very misleading questions. We need a very accurate and firm answers. Let us set up the rules and principles to cover all plastic surgeries in Islamic law. How Islam does legalize niqab or veil factor in our modern life? Is it fair to suggest that it is more cultural than it is Islamic? I would rather to answer these questions by just suggesting a very shocking fact about niqab. Are you ready for that? How Islam does legalize polygamy when Islam always says that respect natural instinct and natural feelings and knowing that not a single woman does accept anyone to share her in her kingdom. All what you have said is true. But is there any difference between your natural instinct and your natural desires, or maybe between your interest or what you wish to have, or maybe your interest and other interest. Is it true that anything came after the Prophet Sallallahu regarding this deen to be considered as a bid'ah, innovation? It's neither this nor that. It seems very well complicated and confusing to many Muslims. And especially what comes to the saying of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and Sayyidina Umar saying, Ni'matul bid'ah to have let us set up the very comprehensive definition of bid'ah according to Islamic law. Coming soon on Huda TV. In your standpoint of view, are there specific or certain criteria to choose your spouse or a partner to marry or not to marry? Maybe that's the question. Do we revise the quality of performance of our treatment between the family members as fathers or mothers? As they say usually, it's not what you say, it's how would you say it? Wouldn't you like to be a good storyteller for your kids? Neurobiologically speaking, child abuse and emotional trauma causes scars in the brain of the child and this might be not easily healing. What's the exact job description of a father? Is it clothing, payments, and feeding, or other important things? Well, I think the job description of a father is merely giving him love and care, self-confidence, giving him sense of security, and checking for the points of strength to stress on them. What about potty training and its planning? Oh yeah, actually, it's a state, it's a condition. Fatherhood is not a body or a person, it's a state. Coming soon on Hoda TV. Recite it every day and do read it loud. 
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back. Today, inshallah, and before we start practicing, I'd like to um, review with you the compulsory med or al med al lazim, which is uh, one of the branches of the secondary med. Uh, simply, it happens due to the fact that the med letter is followed by a sukun, and that sukun must be original and must be within the same word. That the med followed by a letter that has an original sukun within the same word or letter. And let's see how. When an original sukun comes after a med letter in a word or a letter, I say in a letter because when we say the letter, we can spell it in two letters when we pronounce it. For instance, if I want to say sad, it spells as sad alif dal sad, right? And we'll see it right now. And the original sukun, by the way, means that it is part of the original makeup of the word, and it is present whether while we continue the recitation or we stop the reading, it is always present. For example, in one word, I said the med letter is followed by a sukun within the same word or a letter, as far as a word, al haqqa. It is not right, nor is it permissible to say al haqqa. This is totally wrong. Why? Because there, there is a compulsory med. It took place in one word. That's why we call it med lazim kalimi. Obviously, we'll give it another additional name because of the fact that the sukun was merged, the second letter is merged in another similar letter which has a vowel. This is the qaf which is highlighted in red color. That's why when we come to pronounce it, we must give it six counts because it is mad lazim kalimi, musaqal, heavy. So we must say al haqqah. You cannot say al haqqah. And also when you say mal haqqah, and that gives the meaning additional strength. So the tajweed supports the meaning. And it gives you the impression that there is something really serious that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about it there. And obviously that is the Day of Judgment, one of its names which uh, truly will take place. Now, when we say whether it happens in a word, the construction of the word, or the structure of the letters which spill out of a letter. Meaning, look at the word sad there is an entire chapter of the quran that's called sad also we cannot say sad the word the letter sad in order to pronounce that letter we must say sad alif and dal please follow me sad alif and dal so sa alif and dal this alif is alif maddiya the lengthening alif because it's preceded by fatha and the alif itself is sakina. And guess what? It is followed by a sakin letter. Original sukun. So that's why when we come to pronounce this letter in the beginning of Surah Sad, we must say Sad. Six counts. Okay, again. And count with me. Sad. Similarly. Qaf and Noon Wal Qalami wa Masturun and so on. Now we get to know why some reciters prolong it so long. And we call it compulsory because all the Quran and the reciters have agreed that in the case of the compulsory mad, which a mad letter is followed by a sukoon within the same word or letter, then we must prolong it six counts. Okay, uh, look at these two examples. The first one is of Surah at takwir and the second ayah is of Surah Al-A'raf. First verse of Surah at takwir Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, إِذَا الشَّمْسُ كُوِّرَتْ Okay, let's look at this. إِذَا This is an alif maddiyah. And it is followed by, of course, this alif is hamzat wasl. Then it's followed by lam sakina. So why don't we prolong it six counts? Oh well, because it did not meet the criterion. It did not fulfill the condition. The second letter does follow the alif, al maddiyah but not within the same word. That's why we skip this case. 
So we say, إذا الشمس كورت just natural med med طبيعي two counts. Okay. The second example of سورة الأعراف. وقالوا الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله. The shahid or the catch is وقالوا الحمد. قالوا واو مدية. Preceded by ضمة and the lam ساكنة. So the wow which is wa maddiya followed by the sukun but not within the same word. So that's why we do not apply the compulsory mad in this case. Okay. Next example. Uh, we will have many examples because al madd al lazim have four different types. Whether it happens or takes place within a word. Or a letter such as noon, qaf, sad, and so on. So if it happens in a word, it may be that the second letter which follows the mad is actually merged in a similar letter such as al The qaf consists of two qafs. The first one is sakina and the second with a fatha. So we make idgham. We merge the first qaf in the second qaf and we put a shadda along with the Zabar or the Fatha in a state. Why do we have to prolong it six counts and it's a must, it's compulsory? For the following reason. When we have two sukun, the mad letter is sack in itself and followed by another original sukun, it is very hard and difficult to pronounce two sack letters following each other. So the med will make a separation between the two sukoons in order to enable us to pronounce them properly. So we say al And also the med would act like a vowel to the previous letter, the med letter, in order to make distinction between the two sukoons. Okay, that was with regards to the reason. The med should be applied because there are two sukuns in the same one, in the same uh, word, whether it's a word or a letter. One is the sukun of the mad letter and the other is the sukun of the second letter. So in order to make distinction, you have to apply the mad. al mad al-lazim may happen in one word, which we'll call it kalimi, from kalima. So we ascribe it to kalima because it takes place in one word. So we call it kalimi. And if the following letter is a shadda letter, a letter with a shadda, so it consists of sukun and a vowel, then in case we call it mushadad, mad, kalimi, mad, lazim, kalimi, uh, muthaqqal, it's heavy because of the shadda. But if it is simply without the shadda, just a second letter, then we'll call it mad, lazim, kalimi, mukhaffaf, light. Same applies to the case of if the mad lazim takes place in a letter. So we have four cases or four types of al mad al lazim. Uh, the first example, which we will satisfy today with the first example or the first case, which is a compulsory heavy lengthening mad in one word, such as al haqah al in Surat Al-Nazi'at Al-Sakh In Surat Abasa Atuhajjuni Okay So that is called Mad Lazim Kalimi Muthaq I hope inshallah when you download uh, this program you'll be able to hear it over and over and practice. Inshallah over the next episodes we'll cover the remaining types or cases of al al lazim with the very first phone call of today's edition. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Khadija from Nigeria. Wa alaikum salam. How are you? Khadija. Alhamdulillah. Okay, I want to hear Surat Al-Humazah. Okay, Salaam Alaikum. Bismillah, I would like to say, 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 I would
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ويل لكل همزة لمزة الذي جمع مالا وعجدا يحسب أن ماله أخلدا فلا لينبذن في الخطمة وما أدراك ما الغطمة نعو الله الموقدة التي تطلع على الأفكدة إنها عليهم مؤسدة في أمد ممددة إنها عليهم مؤسدة خديجة إنها عليهم مؤصدة. The Hamza on top of the wow must be pronounced as if it is an alif. The Hamza. So please say it again. إنها عليهم مؤصدة. Excellent. خديجة, do you know what al humza means? خديجة. Okay, thank you. Amr from United Arab Emirates. Assalamu alaikum. Sorry, we lost Khadija. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Sheikh. Kayf ahalu kay Amr? Sheikh wa zainta ma alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. You know what al-humza means? Yeah, al-humza, Sheikh, yani with the actions to do the, like, slandering, to do the slandering. Yeah, slandering with actions. Okay. And a lumaza? Lumaza to do um, by backbiting. saying. Okay. Yeah, backbiting by saying. So since we already know that, we must avoid that entirely because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, wail, wail, woe to those who do these evil acts. Okay. Uh, would you please read Surah Al-Fil for us? Inshallah. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألم تر كيف فعل ربك بأصحاب الفيل ألم يجعل كيدهم في تضليل وأرسل عليهم طير أبابيل ترميهم بحجارة من سجيل فجعلهم كعسب مأكول. يلا بس يو إن فيرس نمبر تو ذا وورد تضليل ضاد الساكنة. It is not one of the قلقلة letters. Okay. So say it again, please. تضليل تا 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 it's a تا تضليل تا then followed by ضاد here is an example which makes a distinction between a professional reciter and a beginner because you know how to switch from one letter to another and from ترقيق to تفخيم and the opposite ألم يجعل كيدهم في تضليل okay بارك okay. الله فيك أحمد إن شاء الله we're gonna read سورة العصب before you uh, we read it I want you guys to tell me whether the first ra of والعصر and the second ra of خسر and the last ra of بالصبر whether these ra's are مفخمة or مرققة مرققة which one is مرققة مرققة means thin and مفخمة means fat which one is مفخمة all is مفخمة all is مفخمة okay by stopping on oh once you stop on والعصر then I don't care about the زير or the كسرة only if I continue and I say والعصر إن then it is مرققة thin but when I stop I don't confuse the tafkhim or the tarqiq so I say wal-asr okay then next one khusr it's a scene right khusr so from mufakhama to muraqqa to mufakhama again the scene is muraqqa and fill in between the kha and the ra 
right? And the Kha with Dhamma is highly Mufakham, of course. So it's, it's hard to say it, but once you practice it, you say it right. إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُسْرُ It's a Mufakham, right, Sheikh Ismail? Okay, I just want to get another proof of it. Okay, before you recite, we'll take uh, Sister Aisha from uh, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Assalamu alaikum, Aisha. I'm afraid I'm going to miss the junior reciters once you go to Juz Itabarak and Qatsama. But I want everybody to join me, uh, even if we go to Surah Al Baqarah, inshallah. We have great ambitions that we would like to finish the entire Quran, tafsir and tajweed and memorization by the leave of Allah. Okay, Aisha, deal? Inshallah. Inshallah. Okay, great. Okay, uh, let's recite Surah Al Fil, ya Aisha. ألم تر كيف فعل ربك بأصحاب الفيل ألم يجعل كيدهم في تضليل تضليل عائش تضليل هي أرسل عليهم طيرا أبابيل ترميهم بهجارة من سجيل بارك الله فيك. Thank you, عائشة. رونق from the United Arab Emirates. السلام عليكم سيدة رونق. وعليكم السلام شيخ. How are you, شيخ? Wonderful. الحمد لله وشكرا. سورة الهما ذا بليز. Yeah. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ويل لكل همزة لمزة الذي جمع مالا وعدده يحسب أن ماله أخلده كلا لينبذن في الحطمة وما أدراك ما الحطمة نار الله الموقدة التي تطلع على الأفئدة إنها عليهم مقصدة في عمد ممددة Excellent. Ma sha Allah la quwata illa billah. Perfect. Jazakum Allah khairan, Sister Rawnaq. Ahmed, you got your opportunity to recite Surah Al-Asr with the Ra. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر ما شاء الله يا very close to شيخ حذيفي very good جزاكم الله خير وكي خالد سورة الهمزة بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ويل لكل همزة لمزة الذي جمع مالا وعدده يحسب أن ماله أخلده كلا لينبذن في الحطمة وَمَا أَدَرَاكَ مَا الْحُطَمَةِ There is a khalqala on the dal. So we say, وَمَا أَدَرَاكَ مَا الْحُطَمَةِ وَمَا أَدَرَاكَ مَا الْحُطَمَةِ 
نار الله الموقدة التي تطلع على الأفئدة على الأفئدة There's no قلقلة in any of its letters التي تطلع على الأفئدة إنها عليهم مؤصدة سكن the wow with the hamza مؤصدة إنها عليهم مؤصدة في عمد ممددة Great, بارك الله فيك Okay, uh, Smir Inshallah in the last uh, minute or two I'd like to hear Surah Al-Fil from you أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألم تر كيف فعل ربك بأصحاب الفيل ألم يجعل كيدهم في تضليل وأرسل عليهم طيرا أبابيل ترميهم من سجيل فجعلهم كعصف مأكول جزاك الله خيرا وبارك الله فيكم أجمعين by the end we ask Allah سبحانه وتعالى as the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم taught us to say اللهم اجعل القرآن العظيم ربيع قلوبنا ونور صدورنا وجلاء همومنا وأحزاننا اللهم ذكرنا منه ما نسينا وعلمنا منه ما جهنا وارزقنا تلاوته آناء الليل وأطراف النهار على الوجه الذي يرضيك عنا Brothers and sisters By that we come to the end of today's edition And until next time I leave you in the care of Allah والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Brothers and sisters, to increase your Iman Read the miracle, recite the Quran Recite it every day and do read it loud The verses of Quran are almost Muslims' pride This miracle was revealed over a long time span